Today we're talking soldering in your guitar. We want to know, does it affect your tone? Um, are there things that you should avoid? And at the end of this video, we're going to show you how you can learn to make perfect solders every time and do all your own work, change all your own parts and everything. So make sure you stay tuned. At the end of this video, we're gonna talk about that. I think it's super cool. Also, if you're new to this channel, I was just checking yesterday and there's over 500 videos on this channel now, all about guitar stuff. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, the like button, the little bell next to it, hit all those buttons. Uh, that would really help us out, that would be killer. So let's talk about soldering. Does it affect your tone in your guitar? Well, obviously a bad solder that's broken, that's disconnected, is gonna affect your tone because you're gonna, something's not gonna work or your switch is gonna be, doesn't work or your pickup's not gonna work or your output jack's not gonna work. So obviously that is the case. What about bad soldering? Can bad soldering affect the tone in your guitar? I'm gonna show you a couple pictures. I just found these on the internet. So uh, the quality's not amazing, but I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures of a couple examples of soldering joints that you might want to avoid in your guitar for a couple of reasons. And we'll talk about if they can affect how your guitar sounds. First of all, let's look at this one. You notice that, first of all, it's really blurry. It's a terrible picture, sorry about that. But if you look at that picture, you'll see that a lot of the strands are not even connected, that there are only a few strands touching in that solder joint. Very unreliable, if anything else. Will it affect the tone? You gotta remember that there's hardly any voltage and there's like an almost non-existent current in a guitar. So the load is not, there's hardly any. So yeah, it's gonna pass sound and probably you won't hear much difference or any difference at all, but it's gonna be extremely unreliable. We definitely don't wanna strip our wires this way and we wanna make sure that they are correct before we solder them. The next one is too much heat. Yes, you can solder with too much heat. You notice this one actually burned the insulation of the wire way back from the end where the wire is supposed to go. That can cause other wires to touch it where it's not supposed to. It can weaken the wire and it can also cause the insulation to fail. So make sure you don't overheat your wires when you solder them. At the end of this video, like I said, we'll talk about how you can learn to solder correctly so that this doesn't happen. Fast and hot, boom, done. Perfect solder joint every time and you never have to have this issue. All right, so let's talk about the blob. So here's the blob. If you look at this, uh, these three grounds going on the back of this pot, we all do this, right? We take all of our grounds from our pickups and we ground them on the back of the pot and there we go. But notice how much, there's a couple things here I want you to see. Notice how much solder is used. It's this huge blob of solder on the back of that pot. And also notice all the brown in it. That is rosin. Or in this case, it's possible that it's actually flux. Somebody actually used more flux to clean it so that they get a good solder. A lot of people who can't get a good solder for some reason uh, think they need to use more flux or they need to sand the back of the pot. Uh, and they do these sorts of things, use tons of flux, and it's just pine pitch. So then that's all permeated in your solder joint. That's not good. That can actually add resistance to your solder joint. Now on a ground, does it matter? Maybe not as much as some signal wires, but that is a bad deal. I would not get in the habit of soldering that way. So we'll talk a few, and like I said, in a few minutes, how you can learn not to do that. The other thing that this does when you do a big blob on the back of your solder joint, uh, the back of your pot like that, is especially like this one is a CTS with the center shaft and the bearing. You can actually overheat the mechanism in that pot and you can cause that pot to fail prematurely or actually altogether by the time you get the thing done. So you don't wanna put that much heat in the back of that pot. So just a few examples of things you might want to avoid because if these are a lot of these in your guitar, if all your solder joints look like this, I mean, we've seen guitars that look like this inside, you're gonna have problems. You're definitely gonna have problems and it's gonna be very difficult to troubleshoot things that do and don't work and ha when you have other issues in the circuit. So clean, concise, nice solder joints are really, really important. How do you get them? Well, this is really cool. I've, people have been asking me for really in-depth, super detailed uh, courses on soldering for a really, really long time. 
So with the help of Skillshare, we'll put a link in the description below. Uh, you can click on that. You actually get two free months of Skillshare, by the way, if you click on that link. And you can go to our in-depth soldering course. And it is gonna teach you things like the right equipment, uh, it's going to teach you the fundamentals of soldering because a lot of people don't really understand what soldering actually is and how it works and how it actually makes two things stick together. It's very interesting. So you can, you're going to learn that. And then we're going to show you actual practical examples of actual guitar solders. There's a lot of stuff on the internet about soldering, but not specifically to guitar stuff. So go over there to that link. We'll put It's right below the video right here. And you can definitely check that out. And what's really cool about it is, if you want to try some of these solder joints as we learn to do them together, you can actually upload pictures and we can talk about them. Like if, the, if you have a problem with a particular kind of solder joint, we can actually discuss it and everybody's gonna get better. It's pretty cool. So I just wanna share that with you today because uh, I think it'll be a cool opportunity that we can learn this stuff together. And the other thing is, if you have an idea for another class like this, that um, you know, you're saying, you know, I've watched your videos, I've watched lots of videos everywhere, all kinds of places on YouTube, but I have not seen detailed how-tos on a particular subject. Let me know in the comments, and it's possible that we could put something together on Skillshare and make it really, really easy. That's why I like it. Three, four, five minutes at a time, instead of searching endlessly through YouTube and other resources. It's all in one place. You can watch it three or four minutes at a time when you have some time and then do those practical examples. And actually we give you a list of supplies so that you can do it all with the same exact tools we use in our shop every day. And I think you'll really dig it. My name is Dylan, this is Dylan Talks Tone. I hope you have a good day. If you have any questions about this or anything like this about guitar tone, put it in the comments below and maybe we'll make a video. Have a good one.